Matthew 9, verse 18. And we left off that Jesus has called Matthew. Matthew gets up from his table, and we learn from the other Gospels that Matthew brings Jesus and the disciples into his house for a dinner. And the Pharisees, oh, what's he doing with those kind of people? And we went, we dealt with that last night. Now, the scene is still at Matthew's house. And while he had spanked these things, I mean, he's, he's chewing out the Pharisees. And how Jesus chews out the Pharisees is he speaks the truth. And let me tell you, for somebody like me who speaks the truth, you know, and you're a hateful person. Hey, listen, all I'm doing is telling you the truth. You don't have to do it yelling. I'm street preaching. You don't need any implication. I want people to hear me. Take you inside the church. People don't go to church no more. Am I yelling at you right now? But well, your voice is kind of, well, that's my voice. It's loud. God gave me a loud voice because he, well, this is what he wants me to do. <laughs> so while he's speaking these things unto them, the Pharisees and the people listening, watching, and witnessing, behold, there came a certain ruler, and the other scriptures, will, the other gospel tells us it is Jairus. And you would think maybe he knows Matthew. He comes in, uninvited, he's not near to me. He comes in and worshiped him, Jesus. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses will say Jesus never said he was God. Then Jesus is a blasphemer idiot. Because he allows people to worship him. And we've seen it often in Matthew up to chapter 9. People will come to him and they will worship him. Saying, my daughter is even now dead. She's not sick. She's not ailment. She's not disease. She's dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her. And she shall live. There's a, uh, he's asking for Jesus above a healing. My daughter's dead. Bring her back to life. Now that's faith. Take that to a faith healer. My somebody, whoever it is, just died at the hospital. Come with me. Hurry up. We'll go to the morgue. Bring her back to life. Bring them back to life. Come on. My lover, my friend, my, my child, my, my spouse, my whatever is in the hospital. The doctors say, yeah, go to the heal. The faith heal. It is terminal cancer. Nothing we can do. You come with me. You lay your hand on him. And when the doctor comes back in the room to do a checkup, I, I want him to hear healed completely. They don't need to set up a... You know what they're doing? They're doing what Jesus did. But not even still. Jesus, on the moment it happens, Jesus Jesus never sends up a healing tent. It's just where he is, they come to him, or he goes to them. And Jesus arose and followed him. He's right in the middle of a meal. Do you realize when you look at the life of Jesus, he's never able to finish what he was doing. He was just on the ship. He was sleeping. He's woken up. He's now having a meal, probably a well-fine meal by a tax collector. And the Pharisees come in, interrupts his meal. Then they start talking about fasting. Now Jairus, or this, this certain ruler, comes in. My daughter's dead. Come with me. And he goes.
You would hardly ever find an American Christian. They would have to stop off at, at, at a fast food joint. They would have to stop off at, if it's not Sunday, the holy chicken place. They don't know how to spell chicken. The great worship of the Aaron cow. And so did his disciples. Okay. And we would now assume Matthew goes. Because Jesus said to Matthew, follow me. He didn't say to Matthew, come be fishers of men. Are we supposed to pay our taxes as a church? Are we supposed to pay our taxes? One of the disciples is a tax collector. I think personally, ooh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. I think the Baptist churches are going to be a great fall when they be stand before Jesus and you're find out that you didn't collect taxes. You are stealing from your city. You are stealing from the town. The people around you pay taxes around your property. Why won't you pay tax for your property and your being? Well, you know, in, in Joseph's time, they were limited and they didn't have to. They were Pharaoh's men worshiping, oh yeah, false gods and pagan gods. Jesus paid his taxes. Paul said pay your taxes. Peter said pay your taxes. What's the church say? We're 501 C. And then there are certain communities they will say, we don't want your church here. There are people that say, we're going to build it, we're going to buy this property, we're going to put a church up. And the people say, no, because their taxes would go up because they would lose the tax revenue of that property. That's my 12 cents. Probably about 18 cents now with inflation. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years, and we will find her story in three of the four Gospels. And we'll come, we'll come, as we go each Gospel, we get more and more detail, but we'll remember her later. But remember the number 12. If, Lord willing, we can finish the Gospels without the Lord coming or me dying or whatever. But by the time we come to the end of John, we look at the 12 is going to be su sufficient that this little girl is 12 years old and has died. We are looking at the nation of Israel. Israel is dead. Israel is bleeding. This woman, according to Leviticus 15, she's unclean. You can't touch her. You can't sit on the same chair in the waiting room of the doctor. Her husband can't lay with her in bed. If she would have a nursing child, she wouldn't be able to nurse that child. She wouldn't even be able to hold her children. And there's a specific order in the law that the bleeding of this woman, it could be, with the law, it's a, it's a kind of menstrual bleeding that it goes beyond its time, 12 years. And there are women, and that's happened. In the law, thank God you're, un, you're under grace, she's unclean. I mean, if you were under the law, go to the church, go to church. I can't go to church. I'm bleeding. I'm unclean. I would, I would defile that you. There is no offering for that woman to bring except for when she's healed. Cain be behind him and touched the hem of his garment. That would make him unclean if he wasn't Jesus. If he wasn't God, Mr. Jehovah Witness, the man that's now walking and has been touched has been made unclean. And he would have to go about the rights of the law and would be unclean unto the even. And 
And surely Jesus obeyed the law. And he still goes to the house, and he still touches that young lady, and he's apt to touch this woman. For she said within herself, no one heard her, she's thinking inside. A lot, of Bible, a lot of people do that in the Bible. They were prophets that talked to themselves. I wonder what your psychiatrists think of that. I talk to myself all the time. You see, the problem is not, there's no problem talking with yourself. But when you start arguing with yourself, somebody comes up to you and says, uh, I'm not talking to myself today because I'm mad at me today. Okay, then, then that's, that's too far. If I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. I don't want to interrupt him. I don't want to be a burdensome to him. Just let me touch, in this case, the hem of his garment. That's it. He'll never know. What she's thinking. But Jesus turned him about, and the later Gospels, it gets even more, can I say, comical? Peter will, will step in. We'll, we'll do as it is. This is the king of the Jews. His robe has been touched. And he turned. Oh, come on. You know how many times you've been touched in Walmart? <laughs> Did you turn? It's not that she touched him. is he knew what she said because we just dealt with the Pharisee. You know, they said within their hearts, and Jesus won't, and he answers them. And then he knew already that this woman would touch Hit the hem of his garment before he said, Let there be light. <clears throat> and when he saw her, remember, as we get to the later gospel, there's a whole group of people, there's multitudes around him. So he's looking specifically for her. And Peter is getting in his face later. He said, daughter, she's got to be Jewish. Remember we earlier we talked about there was a man. He said, son, be of good comfort. Can you imagine what she feels right now? <coughs> she's no longer bleeding. She's probably now starting to build a little strength back up from what the loss of the blood. I mean, she's got to get some food and, and she's got to rest, but she's probably feeling, if not by Jesus, she's been totally healed and everything. She, she, if she has a spouse... Or ch children, she probably now she wants to go home and wrap her arm. Oh, the kid, honey, no, I'm clean. I'm no longer bleeding. Wrap your arms around me, hug me, kiss me, and let's go bring what the Bible said, well, the, what the law said for my offering. I'm bleeding no more. What happened? Oh, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you who was walking in the crowd. His name is Jesus. Emmanuel. He didn't touch me. I touched him. And he turned around. And he said, Be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Whole means there's nothing more wrong. And the ones pre prescribed by the law were... The, the doctors were the were the, the priests. The priest would look at this woman and say, "You're clean." Open up the, the leaves and say, "Okay, this is what you need to bring. This is what you need to do." 
And can you imagine the priest saying, ma'am, yes, before you go, what happened? Uh, let me tell you about Emmanuel. Did they know about Jesus? Of course he did. These people, when they were healed, the priests had already assigned them of their infirmities. They had to go back to the priest. The priest would have to examine them. They have to go into the leaves of the law and say, all right, this is what we got to do, Mr. Leper. <clears throat> Blown all the dust off Leviticus 13, 14, because the healing has never been opened before. Except for Naaman, there has been no leopard healed. Can you imagine Leviticus 13 being opened up and the dust being blown away? And it, oh, we finally get to see light. Thank you, Jesus. If the law could speak. And a woman was made whole from that hour. She's no more unclean. In the island nations, and I forget which one it is, I know a missionary that was over there, probably for this woman and menstrual women. They had their own particular hut. And during that period of time, you dwelt in that hut until it was finished. You know, that gives the husband a little... I got to clean the house. I got to take care of the children. I got to do things. Gives them a little time to miss the wife and realize how important that wife's job is. And it gives her rest. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw the minstrels and the people making a noise. And they hired people at, at the deaths. And they would put the body in a room. And we have it called a wake. And they play people to go boo-hoo-hoo. They, they, they actually pay people to cry and fill bottles of, of jars of rain, of water, tears, on in their witnesses. And they pay somebody to boo-hoo-hoo, and they pay somebody to, 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 to have the music. So this is what's happening. She and what is telling us by the minstrels playing, and they're making a noise. This is making a noise, so... They make a noise today on the radio. You don't know what it is. Maybe it's the noise of the crappy music. Because when Moses and Joshua come down and I, come down off the mountain, and they're like, "Is that music I hear?" No, no, no," says Joshua. It sounds like a war. So they're fighting. Joshua. They're fighting Moses. You know, it doesn't sound like the music of. Victory sure doesn't sound like the music of a slaughter. I think it's a music down there. I think they're making a noise. Kind of interesting? The noise of a room of a dead person makes it also the sound of a noise as they're worshiping the, the golden calf. And they're boo hoo hooing. And then Jesus comes walking out in. There's light. Same thing will happen when we get to Lazarus, John chapter 11. Lord willing. He said unto him, Get place. Get out of my way. <laughs> That's what it is. He can't, he's got to move people out of the way. For the maid is not dead. Well, they wouldn't be there. That ain't the problem. But sleeping. God, Jesus, does not call it death. He calls it sleeping. And in actuality, you don't die. Your body is asleep. And that's where they get to the soul sleep. It didn't say soul sleep. The body is sleeping. One day that body is going to wake up to everlasting life. Or it's going to wake up to everlasting destruction, either or. Your soul goes off to heaven or it goes off to hell. Here, go off to Abraham's bosom. I didn't say soul is sleeping. That soul, that child, 
I don't know. A child, Abraham's bosom, probably. The children back then weren't like the children today, and they're probably be, you know, where there is no sin imputed. Paul will tell us who I always forget his first or second Thessalonians. The dead in Christ sleep. So they'll say R.I.P. Rest in peace. The sense of the body resting, yes, but the soul, if it's in hell, it's not resting. If it's in heaven, boy, it ain't resting. It's hallelujah, celebrating, up and up and doing and doing, shouting hallelujahs. I'd be up, listen, you want to say where I am? I'll be up there with the, with, I'd be with the, the four, the four beasts and styling. Holy, holy. All right. I want to hear what they sound like. They're going to have a fifth trio coming up. They laugh him to scorn. Now, what's that mean? <laughs> you idiot. We, she, dang, we know she, ah, Did you hear what he said? She's sleeping. Yeah, Come on, little girl. Wake up. Come on, little girl. Wake up. See, she ain't waking up. Ah, what do you think you're talking about, Jesus? That's what that laugh to scorn means. They are laughing that he said she's asleep. If he said she's not dead, they'd be, well, yes, she is. They would be, they, it wouldn't be laughing to scorn, it would be debating. We know she's dead. She ain't got no heartbeat, she ain't got no pulse, she's turning blue. And you would think that these people who are hired would know a dead body. A nurse, a doctor would know a dead body. They've seen enough of them. But the fact is now, he not only says she's not dead, he, she sleepeth. Oh boy, they love that one. That's, that's a joke. But, okay, okay, okay. Is it for the Jew? Is it for the Gentile? Or is it for the church? Scripture was scripture. We're not going to go run to scripture. Paul says a dead Christian sleep. Paul and Jesus are agreed. And I said, in actuality, no one dies. But when the people were put forth, the, the later Gospels will tell us only the mother and father are there. He has to make room to get in there, give place. Then he starts booting them out. Oh, I bet you that really. They're mocking him. They're, they're making fun of him. And he's like, get out of here. Get out of here. Go. Get out of here. It's everybody. Shut up. Can you imagine what the laughter is? Can you imagine they're going out in the street now. Ha! I thought you guys were mourning that girl. Yeah, but you won't believe what that Jesus did. You know what Jesus did? He walked in there and said, she's sleeping. <laughs> and you know how fast a rumor can get around town. He went in, took her by the hand, and I think one of the other gods will tell it, will, tells you a little Greek. Matthew don't want you to know the Greek. Matthew, Matthew wants you to know the Hebrew of Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. And he doesn't tell you. So if you have a, 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 a preacher or a teacher, uh, Matthew, you know, he went over and tapped the week up. I forget what it is. No, 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 no. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew knew how to write like Luke. Matthew was a tax collector. Matthew kept books for a right. Matthew said, he took her by the hand. Uh, and he said, Holy Spirit said, no, 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 don't you write that. But he, no, no. Matthew, behave now. You write what I tell you to write. Let Mark, Luke, uh, let Mark or Luke take care of that part. You just write, he touched her hand and the maid arose. Okay, 
touch your hand in the main road. Didn't say nothing at all. Maybe he wasn't in the room. I don't know. I'm not going to question the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to say, hey, whatever it is, that's what the Holy Spirit told Matthew. That's what Matthew witnessed. Boom. Got any problems with that? You dial the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit phone line and say, Holy Spirit, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't dare do that. Lord willing, we will get to the other Gospels and we'll study the other Gospels as we get to them. All right. So outside, they're laughing him to scorn. You know they are. It says, made a right. And the fame thereof went abroad to all the land. Now you got a problem. And it's not right. It doesn't. Well, here's the problem. Here's a bunch of people been making fun of Jesus, right? And, and picture. <laughs> he thought she was dead. She's not dead. She's sleeping. <laughs> you, you should see the look at it. And he booted us out. What? Oh, my Jehovah. What? There she is. I thought you said she was dead. She <laughs> you said she's dead. There she is right there. There she is with mom and dad. <laughs> you and dad. <laughs> They're going to the, the, the fruit stand. Where she, uh, the fruit that she loved. They're buying her the fruit she loved. And she's enjoying. I thought you said she was dead. <laughs> now they're laughing at them. And them that are being laughed at, you know they're getting angry. Because you know, I know, Paul knows, have I become your enemy? Because I've told you the truth. When Jesus departed thence, two blind men following him. I got to, how are they following him? He's, he's blind. Crying. And saying, now watch this, thou son of David. Oh, how did Matthew start? What's David? A Jewish king, son of David. They are calling Jesus the king. And I guarantee they're saying it in Hebrew. But we're in English. Have mercy on us. <coughs> <coughs> When he come into the house, I don't know whose house, the blind man came to him. He's in a house, a dumb house. I don't know what house. Maybe we'll get to the other. We'll get there. But the blind man come into the house and they come to Jesus. Jesus said to him, believe ye that I am able to do it. Now they've been along the way walking, thou son of David have mercy on him. Thou son of David have mercy. And Jesus has been walking along, goes into the house, sits down, and there they are. And Jesus turned to you believe I can do this? They said unto him, yea, Lord, <laughs> capital L, Small O, small R, small D. That's the same as the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah. In the Old Testament, we're in the, we're in the Greek now. Then touch he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. I don't think I would get my eyes sick. I don't know if I would believe Jesus. I don't know. Have you ever questioned your belief in your faith? 
There's a man that brought his son, and he, and he says, and he says, do you believe I believe? And he says, Lord, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. He's saying, I believe, but I don't believe. I think I'd stand with him. Their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man knoweth. Okay. But they, when they departed, spread aboard the flame of all the country. How can we do what God tells us not to do? And when God tells us to do something, we don't do it. How do you know Jesus is God? Because they act opposite of what Jesus tells them to do. Now, why would Jesus say, don't tell anybody? Within time, it would be told that these two men can see. And guess what? There'd be multitudes and multitudes at the front door. As respect to the person of the, whoever house he's in. Could be Peter's. If it's Peter's house, he already had one complete night. Everybody's camping out, sick and all that. That would probably make Mrs. Peter upset. So the Pope is not supposed to get married. The mother-in-law who was sick and he healed. She probably wasn't too happy. Maybe the neighbors weren't too happy. And everybody, oh, everybody that's sick in the area is in our neighborhood. How are you supposed to treat your neighbors? Think about that. Jesus would have to make it right and apologize to those he offended by everyone being there. Because somebody would be offended. Come on. You haven't, it doesn't say how long they were blind, but all of a sudden now you can see. How are you going to keep that quiet? But Jesus told them, and what did they not do? They did not keep their mouth quiet. If we were to take the gospel and Jesus said, go to all the world and preach the gospel, as these people that Jesus said, don't tell anybody, they went out and spread the word. If we were to be like that, but we don't. You got the point in churches today. You got to have a cheerleading squad. Just get somebody to raise their hand to have a testimony. And not about what the welfare put in your mailbox, what God put in your heart. I, we were in the church one time. And the pastor often, uh, it was. Five weeks ago, anybody got a test one? There'd be one woman there. And it, was, it was what the government did for her. Finally, the pastor said, anything what Jesus did for you. As they went out, here we go. Behold, they brought to him a dumb man. So, <laughs> hey, did you hear about the two blind men? No, I'm not telling you a joke. I'm telling you, the two blind men, now they can see. Really? How did it happen? This man, Jesus, he, he something in their eyes and they open. Where is he? The Jerusalem Post next morning. Jesus in this house, he's able to heal. That's what the Baptist church would do. Dumb means, that doesn't mean, duh. <laughs> Dumb means they can't speak. All right, isn't it kind of ironic? Here are two blind men that Jesus said, don't tell anybody. They're telling everybody. Now they bring a man who can't speak. He's got the devil. Now, not all people who can't speak has a devil. Got to say that because somebody will say, well, now we're not told what the dumbness is. Is it completely no sound at all? He can't. And there are people who can't do English. My brother had 
a very hard stuttering problem. I do at times. And it's not the devil. It's for me, is I'm lazy with my tongue. I don't want to put my tongue in the roof of my mouth and move this tooth to the right and move this tooth to the left. By the time I got that, I'm on the next sentence. Okay? And I never developed and took the time I'm trying to learn that stuff. I've always been in a hurry. Okay? That's impatience. That's a cinema. But they brought a man who can't talk. What the capability of the can't talk is, I don't know. I don't know if there were different degrees. I don't know if he can hoop, uh, peep, muddle. But he, he's dumb. That doesn't mean stupid. Paul gives us a great word for stupid. Ignorant. And the church is ignorant because Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant brethren. Then he tells something, and the church doesn't know what he said. Ah. When the devil was cast out. Now, what, what, what we're getting here is Jesus the king has power over the devil. That's, that's a ruler. Now, our president don't have that power. If we had a monarchy and a rulership, and if we were to tell certain people, you must do this, you must do that. Well, look at, oh, what's his name? Nahor? The man that cursed the King David and threw the rocks and all that. Solomon calls him into the into the castle, or whatever. He says, "Listen, you build a house in Jerusalem, and don't you dare leave your property. The moment you leave your property, you're dead." He says, "Okay, yes, Lord, yes, Lord." And he builds a property, and he goes out because some slaves have ran away, and he goes after them. And somebody gets on the the, the you know. There's always a Baptist there. Hey, Solomon, guess what? <laughs> it's a Baptist. What? Shimei, that's his name, Shimei. Took a Baptist on the phone to tell me his name. Shimei, guess what? Guess what I know that you don't know. Mr. Baptist, will you tell me? He's not home. He went over there. Thank you. Is there a reward? No, there's no reward. Have a good day. Bye. And Solomon wakes up. Shimei gets home. He's got his... He calls him. He says, "Did I tell you not to leave?" Yeah, my sir turns to Beozai. I think it is. Kill him. You you want less crime in America and less violence in America? You kill somebody, we're going to kill you. They they just had what was it one of those those massacre killers? Twenty years to life or twenty life sentences in jail. Oh. Are you telling me I don't have to work for a living? I get food and that. Uh, I get TV. I don't. No, I don't. Have, I gotta watch one channel, but I get a TV and air conditioning, and my family gets to come and visit me, and they got game. Listen, I, I visit. I visit a prisoner. I, last time I went to go see this person in jail, the kids were all there, and they were playing games, playing. You know. With their dad or whoever the guy was, and they're talking, they're, they're hugging, they're kissing, and they got a little confession session there, like at the ball game. You can get yourself soda, you get yourself one of those pickles in the thing, you can get the ramen noodles, and over here, if you buy the popcorn, they got a they got a microwave oven, they got a armed security guard standing right there, make sure you're protected. Even this one, you can go for a walk around the the, the prison yard. You know, I've been in the prison ministry eight years. There are some they come back. They enjoy it so much. Uh, I freaking don't know where I got off on that one. I brought the when the devil was cast out, the dumb spank. 
You see what dumb means? He couldn't speak. Now he's speaking. He does not have a Hebrew teacher. You thought I was going to say English. Now, let, let's, now we don't know much. Let's just take from a Let's take this person I don't know. I am assuming. Let's say he could never speak. The miracle is now he can speak, and the miracle is now he can speak Hebrew. That's a double miracle. And the multitudes, notice what, what, what? The multitudes, plural, marvel. No, okay. Let's see if I get this right. Jesus marveled at a Gentile who had more faith than Israel. The disciples marveled that Jesus calmed a complete storm. And I'm missing a marvel in there somewhere. There was a marvel over something that Jesus did in a healing. Now they are marveled that that man couldn't speak. Can you imagine a, a Hebrew teacher, and you thought I was going to say English. Can you imagine if there, if there was a Hebrew teacher, not English, Hebrew teacher. She's an English teacher for us, but she's Hebrew teacher for the people. Can you imagine she said, that guy was never in my class. And you know the power of Jesus. He would pronounce every word properly. Can you imagine that? That Hebrew teacher, I didn't say English. Excuse me, sir. And he talked Hebrew, yes. Say to me, she sells by the seashore. You know, I can't say it, but say that in the Hebrew. And he does. What was that time with the Benjamin that they came to this port and the and they would say say Shanuna and they would say Shanun but whatever it was they couldn't say it right I bet you this guy could say it and the multitudes marvel saying and it was never so seen in Israel no one who could never speak was able to speak. But, uh-oh, the Pharisees, I got to say, I got to say the footnote, Paul was a Pharisee. Because I think somewhere during this time, I think Paul are with the Pharisees, maybe not all the time, but Paul was with the Pharisees, I guarantee it, in the life of Jesus. He had to be to be an apostle. That's a definition. Cast out devils through the prince of devils, there is your unpardonable sin right there. And we'll learn that later. So what the Pharisees are saying is, Satan is giving Jesus the power over Satan. And we'll, do the, we'll deal with that later. That doesn't come up now. You're talking about a realm of a kingdom, Jesus will say, the kingdom of the devil, well, we're talking about a king. And he's surely not the king of the devil. Or the devil's kingdom. Jesus, the son of David. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. Teaching in their synagogues. You know how many Baptist churches are around here in Daytona Beach? Do you know what would happen if I went into their Baptist church on their grass, on their property, in their building? One of their off guns. You know what would happen if I sit down with their people and start teaching the Bible the way Jesus and the disciples. If I started doing what Jesus, you know what would happen to me? I would be arrested for trespassing on their private property, but it's supposed to be the Lord's house. They're supposed to be Bible believers, aren't they? You know what Jesus is doing? He's going in the synagogues and he's being allowed in the synagogue to preach and teach the Old Testament. And he's preaching, there's a difference between preaching and teaching, the gospel of the K-I-N-G 
D-O-M. And I told you before, I have a Baptist Sunday school teacher. There's only one gospel. Jesus is not preaching the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection because he ain't dead yet. He's teaching the Jews about the millennial kingdom and the kingdom that will go off into eternity. Healing sickness and disease among the people. And so you see, if we can make the church a kingdom, kingdom hall, we're the church and we got the political leader, the Pope, We got the greatest pastor of all pastors. Our church is going to have a healing service next week. Lord, my shepherd, not more, not, not Lord, my shepherd. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The Christian is not looking for the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is not for the church. It's the Jews. You see, Matthew's been Jewish nine chapters. A couple times we've been church. A couple times we dealt with a Gentile. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. How many times did we read in Jeremiah, read in Ezekiel, read in Isaiah, this is a nation that has no shepherd? There it is. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to bring the church. This is happening to the church. Where the church is more interested, bring them in and the old ones go. I thought it was a nerve, not a Baptist church, but I was official member of the St. Mary's Catholic Church in New London, Connecticut. My name on the rolls and all that. And I stopped going. They would send me the offering envelopes in the mail. Send me a whole box of them. I was supposed to put my money in there and ship it to them. Even though I didn't go to church. I'm surprised the Baptists don't do that. Oh yeah, they do do that. You can give online. Boy, you Baptists are sure turned Baptist Catholics. There are shepherds in Baptist churches that don't care about the flock. I've gone, listen, I've gone witness with my, both my wives. What happened to this person? Listen, we're not asking for gossip. You know my heart. We're praying for the... Well, you know. We left the Baptist church one time and my wife said, you know, we ought to just go back, make things right. I said, we didn't do nothing wrong. She said, Stiley, let's make things right. Okay. I said, okay. My wife was a praying wife and she loved the Lord. He, he don't, he, when she prayed to the Lord, he didn't, I learned today, you didn't go against her. We went back to the, we sat with the pastor. Well, I don't know, what happened to you guys? I thought you fell off the earth. That is some remarkable statement. And I said, well, pastor, this is the problem that we had with each other. And I apologize for my half. And you go ask Lisa, she's in glory today. She, he never, never apologized for his half. I wrote him a second time because we went back to the church. I wrote a second. Listen, I just want to make things men with you. I, I, I'm all finished with you. I, I can't trust you no more. And other people said it. I'm just saying, listen, anything I ever done against you, I am sorry. I, I, I want to put it under the blood. Get things right between you, you and me. But, I mean, Lord, I'm not going to set my face in your church no more. Well, you know, you're scum, this and that. And, uh, 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 I never said he's sorry. That guy's out of the ministry today. He retired or whatever. He had the nerve. 
I was thinking, I was still in school. I, we asked the church, we asked the church, you can ask my father-in-law, he's in Norwich, I, I got the name in the place, you can ask my father. We were, Lisa and I were thinking about having a church where we were living, because there were no good Baptist churches. And we wondered when we got out of school, our aim, I mean, the Lord would probably interrupted it, but our aim was to start a church there. We had a public ministry on that. And we, anybody got a prayer request? Yes, Tyler. Can you pray for us? We want maybe set insights to start in a home church in Norwich where we live. I went to the prison ministry that next Wednesday, Sunday, Tuesday, no, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, you had some nerve to do that. You didn't give me, you didn't seek me. You didn't ask for my permission to start no church. Uh, well, who do you think you are? You're not coming back to this, this place no more to teach anything like that. And we're de-churching you. Here's your official letter. Sent the letter out. Read it to all the church. Stiley has been de-churched. Because he's going to start a church in Norwich. And I said, well, I said, you feel that way? I had, I had a big suitcase of gospel tracks I said sir here's your gospel tracks I went over to the prison guard I said sir here's my ID for this place I'm no longer coming back here in the name of this church have a good day I went over to my locker got all my stuff gave them back the keys you know you had to get the key from them and I went home and I had I had given him I had given him a quarter because he needed a quarter for the locker, and he sent me a letter. Well, here's your quarter bag. You acted so rude. You're screaming. You were yelling and all that. You were angry. My father-in-law read that letter. He says, "Now my wife knew I get I get angry. That's one of my sins." My father-in-law read that. And said, "I don't believe that." You told the church, he says, I was with you. You wanted prayers, but that's what you and Lisa wanted to do. We end up doing it. Thanks to him. And how I got off on that one, that didn't cost you anything. You can go tell him, too. I don't care. He's down here in Florida now, I heard. Along with another pastor that retired in Connecticut. That makes me sick. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to say it right now. It's big. New England pastors work a lot harder than Florida pastors. New England pastors don't get as many vacations and times off like the pastors down here in Florida. New England pastors don't go out to other people's churches and leave the flock behind like Florida. Go, I, don't, I don't care. God's on my side. So, oh, having no shepherd. That's how I got on it. Then said he unto his disciples. Now you got to read this properly. We're going to deal with a couple of other. Read it properly. The harvest is truly plenteous. That's for the nation of Israel. That's the Jews. But the laborers are few. True. Pray ye therefore the Lord, capital L, of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Now, verse 38 gets messed up by your Baptist churches. We're going to send missionaries out all over the world. That's not what Jesus told you. What did Jesus say, say about it? He said, pray that the Father will send, not the church. And if the church will pray for missionaries, God will call that guy out of the pulpit to move that guy, to set that guy, to go out. Paul did not go to a Baptist college. Peter did not go to a Baptist college. I want... Uh, you did a correspondence class. For, yeah, so what? I'm a doctor just like you are. You want to see my diploma? You want to see my letter that will go to any courtroom? 
It says, pray to the Father, the Lord, capital L, that he, not the church, there's no church, send forth labor. You know what's going on with, with the laborers that the church sends today? They go there and they fill shoe boxes with crayons, coloring books, and knick-knack patty lacks, and you get yelled at. You get yelled at in a church in Ormond Beach because you put gospel tracts and little Bibles in it. We can't have that, Mr. Hayward. No, Mrs. Hayward, we're not allowed to put that in there. What'd you do, Styling? I took the box, I dumped it upside down, and said, You take our name off it. And I went and took a new new missionary on from a place I know is King James. I was in a church, you asked Lisa, she's in heaven. You know she ain't gonna lie. We went together, Lisa and I. I, I I had to call her to be to be a preacher. Lisa and I, she says, "Well, we, Lisa had the sense. I didn't." Lisa said, "Well, let's go talk to the pastor." Well, we called him brother. He never called him pastor. So we went to his office, and he says, "Well," I says, "Well." Now we're talking to a man that got kicked out of a pastoral school, whatever you want to call it, because he, he was a brute, angry, and all that, a couple times. I said, listen, I'm being called to preach, and, and we talked, I forget what happened. Next Sunday morning, we went to church, the pastor said, well, I have the honor here to tell you that there's a man in our assembly who's, who's being called to preach, and I want to let you know this for, and Lisa's holding my hand, I said, from this day forth, we're going to support him as a, as a church, and we're going to help him every step of the way, and Lisa's just like, I mean, she, Lisa has a pre-rapture. She's already in heaven. And the pastor got up there and said, Joe Whitmore, will you come up here? And I was like, whoa, what? She said, that was supposed to be you. And I said, well, we'll go find another church. Don't bother me. By the way, that church is all messed up today. I don't think the Lord called Joe Whitmore. The Lord called me. I wonder how that pastor would be uh, today with, with all the ministries God's given me, all the great blessings God's given me. And I'm looking for more. But the verse says, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send, not the church. Because, you know, I've heard something recently that I really not have heard before. Missionary churches out there are training their people in the Bible and the missionary church people are going out becoming the missionaries. Pretty soon the Lord tarries, America is going to need missionaries. Not as the sendee, as the receiver. Thank you.